what we're going to do is we are going to add a create event just like this. And I will go ahead and expand that. This is our first enum. We are going to have multiple in the create event for our skills object. Let's go through each and every single one. The first thing is fairly self-explanatory. It's the name of the skill. The next one is the element. Now the element is whether it has no element, uh, fire, water, etc., etc. Okay, and we're gonna set that in another enum, which we will call skill element. The next one is the type of skill that it is. So is it a physics physical skill? Is it a magic skill, etc., etc.? We are going to set that with a skill type. The next one is targets. So this one is going to be a little bit tough to explain. So I'll get to that in a second. And then we have health change. Obviously every skill that you want has to do something, okay? It might be say, it might, most skills will do damage, but you might have a healing skill as well. Make sure that uh, this is this is going to be numbers, right? One, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. If you wanted to do healing, you're going to have to type it in as a negative, right? The next one is going to be cost. So how much SP this particular skill that we're going to create will cost is going to be a script that we're going to run. We're going to run either a script that will target a single unit or it will attack multiple. Okay. So that's what this first enum is all about. Let's go ahead and add in our second one. This is skill type, which we are addressing uh, here in the type section. And basically it's just going to ask us, is it physical, is it magic? You can add in other types of skills that you want. That's completely up to you. But generally speaking, when it comes to RPGs, you either have physical skills, which are like weapon skills, and you have magic, fairly self-explanatory. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so the next one is skill element, which is up here. Now for mine, I only have weapon skills, so I'm just going to leave mine at none. But if you wanted to, you could type in something like fire, or I don't know, maybe you want an ice skill as well. That's, that's where you would put your different skill elements. Fairly self-explanatory. I am only going to be working with none, mainly because things like fire and ice, these skills have other things that could that could attach to it. Say, for example, I don't know, with a fire skill, there might be a chance to burn the enemy. Obviously, with an ice skill, a chance to freeze the enemy, etc., etc. And on top of that, that also requires us to have other things for the parent unit as well. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And a whole bunch of other things. Skills can be a very, very big thing in your game. This next thing is a function. And this function is a constructor. What we're going to do is we are going to create in our skills object a bunch of skills that any game object in our scene can access. And so here, if you guys have seen my video on constructors, I will have a link to it in the description, or you can click the cards above. We are going to create a new version of this skill stat. So basically what we're going to do is our skill obviously needs a name. We need an element, we need a type, health change, etc., etc., which is all of these things in our enum. Now, the reason why it's not here and rather it's down here is because we are actually going to use the object that we create from this to actually do stuff. Okay, so with that said, let's create our first skill. All right, so here is our first skill. What we've gone ahead and done is we've created a global, a global array called skill. Now here it is, skill is down here. Okay, and it's got, we've called it slash. And so each and every single one of your skills, you're going to need to name it. You could, of course, just leave it as zero. That's completely fine too. So if you did that, that's totally fine. You just need to be able to keep track of what skill, skill zero is. So for the purposes of sanity, we are going to keep it in an enum. Alternatively, you could also use a macro to keep track of the names of your skills. It's completely up to you how you want to implement your array information. So I'm just gonna set that back to zero. 
And then we're going to call the constructor, which creates a new skill. Okay, this skill has a name, obviously, which is up here. We have this skill element, which is, of course, for us is none. Our skill type is physical. We will have, it will cost two points. And it does one uh, unit of damage. And it runs a function called single target attack. All right, so that's it there. Let's create another skill. This time, instead of single target attack, and instead of calling it slash, let's go ahead and use this one, multi-slash. Okay, so here is our multi-slash skill. All right, and here it's called m slash. This name is actually what's going to appear on the button. All right, so just keep that in mind. Again, it has no element. It has a physical property. It costs two points, does two damage. And this time, instead of single, it uses a multi-target attack function. Now you might be wondering, what is the point of having this skill stat up here if we're not going to use it? Truth be told, you can actually you can actually get rid of this. However, we're going to need to access this information at a later stage, a stage that I haven't actually planned for yet. So just in case, we're going to keep this up here. Okay, but in all, in reality, all you need is just all of this code. You can do without this top one at all. So just keep that in mind. All right, so that's it for the create function. Let's save that out. That's the end of our skills object. That was literally it. <laughs> the next thing that we're going to do is we actually need to fill in all the information for our buttons. So if we go into the room editor and we go to the base UI, we don't have a uh, skills button yet. So let's add in a new instance and double click that, go to variables and let's type in our string. So obviously I'm gonna call mine skill. And for our main function, we need the skill menu. And just to make sure I haven't made any mistakes, let me go check that skill menu. Okay. All right. So as you saw, we don't have any code for our skill menu. So let's go ahead and add that in. All right. Let's start with skill menu. I'll get rid of this line because we actually need it now. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is when we click the skill menu, it's actually going to act a lot like the attack button right here, right? Where it disables input, it does a whole bunch of things, and then it re-enables input. So that's what we're going to do with our manager. We're going to disable input, and then we're gonna do, we're gonna do this. We are going to disable our base UI, and instead of the targeting, Right, instead of this, instead of targeting, we are going to open up the skills menu and then we will re-enable input. Right, that's, that's all it's going to do. Fairly simple. The next thing in is the actual skill button. Now this one is way, way more involved than the regular skill menu. Okay, so I'm gonna go through these two lines here. The first one is we are going to store in a variable called cost, the actual learned skill of our selected unit. And we're gonna store the cost of that skill. Now this, this skill button is going to get called when we actually click on this skill that we want to call, all right? That's what's going to happen. So as we run through the code, we need to store the cost, all right? Because we need to check that. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check the SP, the current skill points amount of our selected unit, because in the next few lines, we're going to check if they have enough points to actually use the skill or not. Okay, so with this, we're going to check if our SP, right, if our skill points amount is currently greater than the cost, which in actual fact, it should be, well, it should be greater or equal than the cost. We need to do some stuff. We're gonna do some stuff in here. Of course, if it doesn't have, if we don't have enough points, right? We have the else statement here. It's going to show the message, not enough skill points. Obviously, I want you guys to do something else. So I'll put this on a new line. So it's a little easier to see. 
And that's basically it. That's all that I'm going to do for this particular else statement. Okay, it's up to you what you want to do. Maybe you want to show a message or something. Up to you. What's more important is what are we going to do if we're going to actually use that skill? Again, we'll go through it line by line. All right, first thing is going to be global.skill targeting, not regular targeting. Skill targeting is going to be set to true. All right, and then with the next line, okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to take our selected unit and we are going to set its selected skill. Now for that to actually happen, we're going to scroll across so that you guys can see everything. We are going to go to the global.selectedUnit.learn skill. Now from this learn skill, right, if we go into our, I think it's our S player, not S player, it should be in our player grid. Here we go. We are going to pick the correct uh, skill from here, right? Which is either zero or one in our case, or four, five, six, etc., etc. However many skills you have in your game, and it's going to get that skill from the buttons, right? Now our global skills buttons is actually being held in our manager. Which, if we go over here, right here it is skills buttons, right? And that itself is a list. And so when we are in our, if I can find it in our code here, we are going to set that skill ID and we're going to set it to the selected skill for our unit, okay? It's a little bit confusing, but, and hopefully at the end of this video, everything will work. Let's go down to the next section. Okay, so with this bit, we're going to run a for loop. And with this, we're going to find in the units, I++, we're going to store that units into a local variable. After that, we're going to, we're going to check to see if our instance is not the global selected unit. Okay, here we go. We are only going to add our list. Uh, we're going to add the instance that we're targeting to the global dot targets list. Okay. This is temporary. This solution is temporary, temporary until we add teams. Okay, so that's a very important point I want to make. Once we add in teams, this will look slightly different. Okay, the last bit that we're going to do is something very similar to skill menu up here. Okay, so what we're going to do is with the manager, we're going to disable input. We're going to disable our layers, right? And then we're going to re-enable input because once this gets sorted, we need to then actually stop targeting. Okay, so that's it. That's all we're going to do for this. And this closes off the skill button. Now we don't have anything here is the reason for that, I believe, is because we haven't actually set anything for our room. So let's go into our room editor. Let's turn off the base UI and turn on the skills UI and let's check to see if our generic button, there we go. We haven't got a main function for that. So let's put in our main functions now. All right, so for us, what we're going to do is we'll turn on these two. Now, I want to have a default button for our skill. The reason being because just in case something breaks with our code, we at least have a visual feedback. We have some sort of visual feedback that tells us, hey, your code isn't running properly. So uh, the default name is, I'll call it null. And of course the main function needs to be down here, skill button. Copy that over. All right, something like that. Okay, so we, you can do that and you should do that for each and every single one of the skill buttons in your game. All right, so I only have two buttons in my game for my skills, two skill buttons, and I only have to write that out twice. So that's uh, that's what you can do. Of course, if you have more, then you'll need to put more in. All right, I think that's good as it is. I guess the only thing that I have to do now is test to see if everything works. So let's save out our game. And let's just check our code, see if anything, everything works properly, everything looks good. I think it looks fine. 
let's try playing our game and see what happens. All right, so as we just saw, our cancel button needs a little bit of help. So the first thing that we're going to do is, well, we need to make sure that we cancel our skill just in case we're skill targeting. Uh, if we can if we cancel out, we need to get rid of the currently selected skill. And we do that by taking our selected unit and setting it to nothing. The next stage is fairly obvious, a little more obvious than resetting the skill, but it's taking our skill targeting bool and setting it to false. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to, with our C manager, we're going to check to see if our skills UI is visible, we're going to turn it off, right? Which is this line here. So let's save that out and let's check again to see if everything works. Rather than the manager, I believe that instead of just global targeting, we need to also check to see if we are also global dot skill targeting. And now we should be able to see some sort of targeting menu. So let's save out this change and let's run our game. 